Picking a graphics card can make or break your system. Well, not literally, but you'll regret it for a long time if you don't do sufficient research beforehand. And it's got to be smart research. You've got to ask yourself the right questions. Perhaps the most important of these, in what resolution do you intend to game? 1080p? 4K? The second question follows suit. At what refresh rate do you intend to game? 60 hertz, 120, 240? Your answers to these two questions will define your PC build without a doubt. They'll influence your CPU choice, your power supply choice, and maybe even your case choice. A lot's riding on this one. Here's a quick rundown. Picture the graphics card as the foundation on which all other computer components rely. And if you aren't interested in discrete graphics for gaming, then your CPU becomes this foundation. It's my personal belief that your entire budget should revolve around this graphics card choice, which, as we just discussed, is dependent on gaming resolution and refresh rate. I should also mention that these recommendations assume a minimal CPU bottleneck, 16GB of system RAM which should remove any RAM bottleneck, and moderately demanding current gaming titles. So let's start with the lower end and work our way up. We've got a few contenders way down at the base of the spectrum, something like this NVIDIA G210 may seem appealing on paper thanks to its extremely low price, but you'd almost be better off sporting just a CPU in your PC and running off of integrated graphics. In some cases you actually would be better off, no joke. Serious gamers, even in lower resolutions, should be prepared to spend anywhere from 50 to 100 US dollars at least, that's roughly RX 460 territory just on the upper edge, and the RX 460 is a much more powerful car than these two from Nvidia, mind you. We'd have to bump up to the GTX 1050 for a fair fight from the green team. So all of these GPUs fit into what I would call the 1080p 60fps category, as in, don't expect to attain much higher than this without serious graphical compromises. Any resolution below this with modern games, and you should be okay, 720p, you should be fine with any of these graphics cards, as long as you're willing to adjust a few in-game settings. The 1030 isn't an interesting price point, but if you ask me, pay a little extra for the RX 460 or the GTX 1050. Again, 1080p gaming here wouldn't push these cards above that, and pairing either of these with a 144Hz monitor, for example, wouldn't make much sense unless the game in question fares somewhere along the lines of CSGO. Our next category is the 1080p 1440p category. The cards listed here are very fluid in that they can easily run a majority of games in 1080p and even light 1440p with adjusted settings, ergo dropping texture quality from very high to high, high to normal, you get the point. Included here are the RX 470 through the 580, R9 380, 390, and everything in between, along with the GTX 960, 1060, and 970. Remember that these aren't absolutes, there are certainly circumstances in which these general rules are a bit of a stretch, but for any beginner, this should give you a good idea of what to expect. I also have several links to benchmarks down below to back up these claims. All in all, expect to spend anywhere from two to 300 US dollars for one of these cards. Up next is the 1440p category. The cards listed here are without a doubt 1440p powerhouses and can even handle refresh rates exceeding 100Hz pushing that 4K boundary. You'll find the GTX 1070 to be an excellent performer here for the price, as well as the late 980Ti, though power consumption should be considered. AMD's Fury lineup is a great fit here as well, and you can usually pick these up for considerably less than their Nvidia counterparts. See this video right here for more details, though do keep in mind these cards are very power hungry. You could probably make the case for the GTX 1080 here as well, seeing as though the 1080 Ti has lowered prices a bit. The 1080 is a large leap above the 1070 from a performance perspective, but may prove to be a bit overkill for anyone locked at 60 hertz below 4K. The last category then is the 4K category up to 120 hertz. If you're gaming a resolution higher than this or with multiple monitors, you probably already know what you're doing and you're just watching this video for sick kicks, which is still cool. Packed into here are the priciest of the pricey graphics cards available, and even a few Crossfire SLR configurations for cards that won't perform up to spec by themselves. First and foremost, the prominent GTX 1080 Ti is an excellent 4K graphics card. Even Intensive Witcher 3 is crushed by this NVIDIA powerhouse, and for around the same price as its 980 Ti counterpart this time two years ago, technology has made leaps and bounds in just two years. It's incredible, and the prices haven't gone up accordingly. From AMD, it's difficult to recommend anything reasonably priced at this point since we're largely anticipating Vega, but we aren't certain of performance numbers. Some expect Vega won't touch the 1080 Ti, others wholeheartedly think that it will. But for now, as of May 2017, the best I can do for the red team is recommend a Crossfire configuration. Two Fury Xs should do the trick, but at the expense of some serious power consumption. 
two GTX 1080s would also work here as well as two GTX 1070s, though the latter would certainly struggle with anything above 60 FPS in the 4K resolution. So that's my breakdown and my experience when friends and family ask for gaming advice, I break it down like this. Identify your constants, your gaming resolution, and your gaming refresh rate, and then pick your graphics card from there. Everything else in your PC, if it is a gaming PC, should follow suit. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite click, and subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.